Mark Santiago here, and welcome to the Empowered AF Podcast, where each episode we share powerful strategies to help you communicate, act, and lead like an empowered man. Thanks for joining me. All right, all right, all right. We are live with my Ask Me Anything. Ask Mark Anything. Today's the day we're going to lay it out. Uh, We are heading into Thanksgiving. We're heading into Christmas, uh, Hanukkah, if you celebrate Hanukkah. We're heading into the holiday season. And guys, for some of you, it's going to get worse. It's going to get harder. Uh, So it's imperative that you lean into the community that we have built for you. And look, this community is, is just a free community that we have. But if you're looking for more, I highly recommend our 30 day challenge. Or if you're really ready to do the work, I recommend Thrive. Thrive is the place that our guys go who are really just committed to growth. They're committed to ending the toxic nature of their relationship, ending the toxic nature of who they are as men, ready to own their shit, ready to move forward. Um, so with that said, I want to talk about our group real quick before I get into the questions. Uh, a lot of you are new. Um, we've we've grown by, I think, a thousand members in the last I don't know, month or so, uh, we're adding a lot of new guys every day. Um, the group is just picking up steam. And so I gotta, I gotta lay down some of those ground rules. Um, as a reminder, this, this group is not a divorce support group. It is a men's empowerment group. Now that definition, just by saying empowerment is going to have a lot of different, uh, you know, definitions for people. Um, you know, the definition of empowerment to you may be different, uh, different from the definition of empowerment to me. And so I wanted to share as the group owner, what that looks like for me and what it looks like for us. So when we talk about empowerment, we talk about the idea of empowering men, giving them tools, putting them that put themselves in the most powerful position possible to really have freedom in their life, to have confidence, power, and freedom in their life. And so it's imperative that if you're going to be in this group, that you align somewhat with those values. Now, look, you don't have to take everything I say as truth, gospel, whatever, right? You're going to have things that you doubt about what I say is too good to be true or it's bullshit or whatever. That's fine. That's, that's on you. But the more you stick around, I think the more you'll see that what we're talking about here is something that not a whole lot of other groups are talking about. And that is because when you go through separation or divorce, it's so easy to blame the woman. It's so easy to go, ah, she's fucking around on me. Oh, she's a whore. Ah, oh, she's a bitch. Ah, oh, she's all these things. But look, when you vent that in a Facebook group, number one, Facebook has actually tools that are starting to censor things. Now, if you don't like it, you don't have to be here. But the fact is, is they censor those things. The second part is what I found in working with men for over 10 years is that if you just vent all of your feelings out in a, in a forum, in a, in a public group like this, what you're doing is you're actually making more of an ass of yourself than you are of your wife. Because it says more about your character and what you are able to do with the pain than it does about who she is. Now, again, you can agree or disagree. doesn't matter. You don't have to be here. Um, I want you a part of our group and I want you to be a part of what we're doing, but Honestly, I'm not here for everyone. I'm not a, this isn't a populist thing. I'm not trying to win an election. Um, This isn't about, you know, being a certain way for certain people. This is literally just, this is our belief system. This is what we believe to be true. And this is the way we function. And so if you're going to be in this group, you're going to abide by those rules. You're going to not talk shit about your wife. You're going to, uh, you know, tread carefully on how you speak about the opposite sex. And so, I'm a stickler for that. And I will call you out when I see those types of things happening. Now, here's the other side of that coin is because when I'm calling you out, I'm not just saying it because, oh, Johnny's not being very nice and he's talking really badly about Susie. It's that Johnny's exposing some ego in himself. Johnny's exposing pride in himself that is unhealthy and needs to be addressed. And if he's going to be here and if you're going to post things publicly, I'm going to call you on those things. Hey, you can, again, you can have a problem with that. You can take me up on that and that's fine. We'll talk about it. But the fact of the matter is, is we're not here for your backstory. We're not here for your 10 pages of glorious notes of all the wonderful hard things that you went through. And it's not that we don't care, but you're not the only man. You're not the only person. Your story is important, but in context, the context is not this free Facebook group. This free Facebook group is meant for you to 
put out what you're experiencing emotionally, what you've gone through. So if you said, for example, my wife had an affair. Um, I don't know if I want to move on or not. I'm experiencing all kinds of shame and fear around this. I need some help. Holy crap. Now, when you post something like that, we can actually work with that. We can actually then ask you questions that draw out what is going on. But what most guys do is they show up and they're like, hey, I've been married for 12 years and she did this to me six years ago and then five years ago this happened and then three days ago this happened and then two days ago this happened and then yesterday this happened and then tomorrow this is going to happen. Six years from now, this is what's going to happen. Why? Because they're projecting all their fears and all their shit onto the group and we're not here for that. It's draining when you talk like that. So I want to challenge you to change your language. I want to challenge you to change the way you're approaching your situation. What I'm looking for are men who go, I'm hurting and it sucks and I'm in pain. I need help. We can work with that. But if you want to come in here and bash and bash women and bash us and whatever, you're going to be gone. You're not going to make it. Um, we can't help you if that's the way you're, if you're going at it. The second part of that too is we are a business. We are not a ministry. We are not a nonprofit. Uh, we are in business to make money. That's a part of what we do. That doesn't mean we're evil because we get paid to do what we do. We give value and we try to give more value than what we receive in return. And some of you have a problem with that. I don't give a fuck. You can take your money wounds somewhere else and shove them up your ass. Why? Because they don't affect me. Your financial problems are not my financial problems. Your, your problems are not my problems. Your issues are not my issues. I have healthy boundaries in my life and I won't allow your, uh, your money wounds and your pride and hurt around that to affect me and whether or not I charge for my services. You don't tell that to the doctor. Why? Because your insurance pays for it and you don't think you actually pay for it. You don't tell that to other people, right? Because you don't tell that to your mechanic. Oh man, you should help me out, brother. I could, you know, you, you could probably fix my car for free. He, he, he'd probably look at you and go, what? Do you want this monkey wrench on top of your head right now? He'd probably hit you upside the head and say, what the fuck are you talking about? Right? We are mechanics on men's hearts. We help men move through this pain, this process of separation and divorce and come out on the other side strong and empowered. So if you want that, hang around. I'm about to do an ask me anything. I'm about to answer questions from other men that are in pain and that have decided to raise their hand and say, Hey, this is what's going on. These are the things And I got some really good questions that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about boundaries today. We're going to talk about neutral woman. We're going to talk about communicating. We're going to talk about relationship uh, boundaries and, you know, and, and sex and things of that nature. So if you're here and you're ready to be committed to process and change, stay tuned, listen to the messages we have, go watch the podcast, go be a part of the community, ask good questions. That's how we build a good community. But if you're a straggler, get the fuck out. If you're someone who is here just to cause issues, get the fuck out of my group. I don't need you here. I don't want you here. What I'm looking for are men who are ready to push aside all the bullshit and say, you know what? I've got to work on me because gentlemen, it starts with me. Personally, I have constantly have to work on myself. And so I bring that same level of tenacity to what I do in Empowered Man that I don't have all the answers. We always say we are imperfect gurus here at Empowered Man. We are not, we are not model citizens who everyone should live after. What we are are coaches who are really good and attuned at helping men figure out what is going on inside of your heart, how you can move forward and continue that. And I live that first in my team. And I'm held accountable by my team and I'm held accountable by other people in my industry for that reason. You don't need to hold me accountable. I've got other people for that. All right. So let's get into it today. Let's go. Number one, Mike Morrill. Are there any tips for communication with a wife who has filed for divorce, having a difficult time going neutral woman? So Mike Morrill, one of the things we teach you concept of neutral woman. And that's this idea that if you were in a grocery store and there was a woman behind you, you wouldn't turn around and say, hey, you want to have sex tonight? Hey, can I give you a hug and tell you I love you? You wouldn't do those things because that woman would be neutral to you. She's not a woman you have affection towards. She's not a woman you know. She's not a woman that you've uh, been in any type of relationship with. And so that's the same idea that you need to take to your wife. In terms of how to communicate with her, you communicate with her the same way you would communicate with the woman behind you at the grocery store. You don't know her, so you're going to be kind. You're going to be nice. But just because you're nice and kind doesn't mean you have to be friends. You can be friendly without being friends. You don't owe her emotional support. You don't owe her emotional connection. You don't owe her any of those things. What you owe her 
is to be kind and to be nice and to talk about the things that only she needs to know about. For example, in most situations, we recommend talking about finances, logistics, and kids. That's it. How are the children doing? Here's a picture of Johnny. Here's what happened today at school. Here's what's going on with our financial situation. Here's what's going on in logistics. I need to get this thing from point A to point B. Hey, is it art if I come by the house and pick up this thing? Is that cool? Keeping it short, simple, sweet, and to the point is going to be most effective for you. All right, let's move on to the next one. Francois, I believe is how you say it. What's the best way of dealing with a toxic narcissist? Bar from just walking away. Just walk away. <laughs> I mean, most of the time you can't deal with a narcissist. Most of the time you just got to walk away. Uh, someone that thinks she's always right and never admits when she isn't. We still live together. Deal with it. Gone completely neutral, which seems to help a bit. Use four C's in communication. No, I can't change your mind. So it sounds like what you're really asking is how do you get her to stop being so narcissistic? You cannot stop her from being narcissistic. The tools we give, like the four C's, if you, if you, if you guys are wanting to understand how we teach communication, go listen to the four C's of communication podcast um, that will help you. The four C's of communication that we talk about in there, uh, the four core. Uh, the core four, excuse me, uh, that core four will help you in dealing with someone like her. But, but here's the deal. You can't change her. And any attempt at you trying to change her, guess what that is? That's manipulation. That's you trying to control the outcome that you have no business trying to control. Now, imagine for a, sec a second, if you allowed yourself to let go of the feelings you have for her, and allowed her to be herself without you trying to control her. Guess what happens? Freedom. I'll say it again. Freedom. Freedom is what happens. Why? Because you're no longer codependent upon a person who doesn't give a fuck about you. If she's truly a narcissist, she doesn't care about you. Now, someone has narcissistic tendencies, that means they become selfish in certain moments because their ego is protecting them from trauma that they experienced as a child. And you, sir, are engaging in that trauma and are a part of her world, are a part of her story because you like it, you want to be a part of it, something in your ego is causing you to want to save her from her being a narcissist. And you go, well, we're living together. We can't, okay, I totally get that. I lived with it as well. And in living with it, I had to understand that the more I engage with it at an unhealthy level, the more I don't shut it down, the more it's just me trying to want to have a fight. It ends up being about you wanting to engage it with her in an unhealthy way. And so you got to let go of the ego first. You can't do any of this stuff. Guys, like all of these things, all these questions come back to your ego. Hard as fuck to receive, but it really comes back to your ego as a man. The second you can let go of your ego, the quicker you can embrace the idea that she's not perfect, that she's toxic, that there's things about her that make it hard to be in a relationship with her. But at the same time, you start to realize that I allow those things to be pulled out of me. And that's not healthy. All right, let's go to the next one. Mark, wondering if you could give me some examples of power statements we can use when a toxic conversation starts. I've been able to end the conversation with I refuse to communicate with you when you act this way. It's unhealthy. Simply walk away. Usually an apologize. So more of what you're talking about is a power triangle. So when we talk about power triangles, I want to be able to communicate effectively and make powerful statements to let her know I can't communicate this way. Thanks in advance. So power triangles are essentially when we own our shit, we communicate a boundary and we, we set that boundary. Um, so that's the power triangle. Um, so a power statement generally is a part of this usually. So it's the, I feel type of stuff. Um, so essentially, <laughs> sorry, I just saw a comment. Of course, Rory would say that. Um, so essentially when you're talking about power triangles, what you're, what you're saying is that you want to own your shit with her. So walking into a conversation with someone who's toxic and say, Hey, I've allowed this to happen, or I have approached this in an unhealthy way. Right. What you're doing is you're kind of leading with owning your shit. You're leading with, hey, the way I've been talking to you is inappropriate and I'm not going to do that anymore. Or I've noticed that I've allowed our conversations to get unhealthy and I don't want to play that game anymore. Therefore, moving forward, anytime we start to argue or anytime I start to feel enraged or upset, I'm going to take a moment and, and, and tell you, hey, I don't feel good about where this conversation is going, so I want to pause where I'm at and we'll come back in 30 minutes. That is how you set a power statement or a power triangle. 
All right, next one. How can I keep from getting drawn into the text arguing? Corey, go check out. I've got a great uh, podcast, and I think a couple of them actually on texting, on toxic texting. I used to do these toxic, toxic texting teardowns where I would take your text messages and start to tear them down to show you what you're doing. So I don't know exactly what you, you are doing with yours, but the best thing you can do before you get into a text argument is to just stop and breathe. Give yourself time. Say, you know what? I'm not going to respond for at least 30 seconds or I'm not going to respond for five minutes and look at that text and think about that text. Think about your response. Do not write your response in the box because you might accidentally hit send, but think about the response. You don't have to respond right away. Think about whether or not this text needs a response. Anybody that comes to a table and says, you must respond to me that is making me respond is usually not somebody I want to deal with. Now I get it. You're a certain authority situation, like a boss or something like that. But even then anybody that's toxic, you want to give them space, give yourself space, because if you can't give yourself space, you're going to be in a place that is not safe. I feel like that was a rhyme or something. <laughs> give yourself space. Uh, if you don't give yourself space, you're going to be in a, in a place that's not safe. That's for sure. Um, so give yourself space, calm down, do some breathing, practical things like guys, the stuff we teach is not esoteric and out there and far out and far fetched. The stuff we teach and thrive is very practical. 30 day challenge, very practical. Why? Because that's what men need. You don't need another coach trying to get you to just feel all your energy shit. You don't need more like just me meditations are good and we have this part of our program, but beyond that, you need practical implementation. So if you're looking for that, Thrive is the place to get that from. But look, you got to stop engaging with your own ego in this situation. So more than likely what's happening is if you're not stopping, you're allowing that trigger in the back of your brain. You're allowing that to come to the place where you decide whether or not you want to answer. Because if you're getting triggered by the back of your brain, you're not thinking. You want to wait till that goes back to the frontal lobe of your brain where your logic is, because all this is your hypothalamus and all this stuff back here. You're responding out of trauma and not responding from a place of logic, which is dangerous. And this is what happens all the time with married couples who have lost respect for each other or have engaged in any of the four horsemen. If you aren't familiar with that, go look up Gottman, uh, the Gottman Institute, and they talk about the four horsemen, stonewalling, gaslighting, all those types of things you know, all of those things, what they do is they cause you to talk to a person that you used to love in a way that's unhealthy. And sometimes it just happens over time where you start to just regress in how you communicate with this person. And instead of loving them, you get nasty with them and then it becomes the norm. And then your normal conversation with them is unhealthy. So Corey, I would say to you, stop, breathe, take some time, process it, think about your, you know, what's happening, what's triggering me and really look at your own ego and go, how is this, how is this triggering my ego? Like, what am I protecting? What am I protecting? Guys, ask yourself that. What am I protecting? Some of you need to think clearly about that today before you go to bed, when you're writing your notes, journaling, whatever, listen to my podcast, think, ask yourself that question. What am I protecting? Because if you feel like you constantly are having to protect something, you're in a dangerous position and you're easy to be manipulated, easy to be manipulated. People who are trying to protect themselves constantly don't have an ability to love. Look, you can't love someone if you are in fear of them. They don't coexist. Fear and love cannot exist. You'll have no authority over someone you are afraid of. You'll have no husbandly authority in a relationship when you are afraid of your spouse. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one because that one gets stuck. Uh, it's, that, that can get me down a path I don't want to go down right now. All right, uh, how to get her to see boundaries as boundaries and not punishments of sort. Again, how to get her to see. So the way these are worded is very controlling and manipulative. So I would say more than likely your stuff is coming across as manipulative. So instead of you setting boundaries, you probably are trying to control her. 
right? So what we want to do is instead of trying to set boundaries that punish or that control, we want to set boundaries that are more for you. So for example, a boundary for you could be, I will no longer engage in hugging my wife, or I will no longer engage in saying, I love you to her versus you must hug me and try to use that as a boundary. If you don't hug me, then I'll know you want a divorce or some bullshit like that. Like guys say stupid things like that all the time. Or if you don't say, I love you, then you must be cheating on me. Like they use this really weird logic around things. So to set a boundary with your wife, you, you look at more for yourself first. Hey, I'm not going to do these things. I'm not going to say, I love you. I'm not going to, um, hug you at night. I'm not going to, you know, hold your hand anymore. I'm not going to do those things. Not because I want to punish you, but because I love myself enough to protect myself from being hurt. Man, there is a huge difference. Some of you are doing this shit because you want to punish her. Fine. I'm not going to love you. I'm not going to hold your hand. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pay the bills. I'm not going to do this. But that same guy, as soon as she opens up her legs, he's ready to insert his dick inside of pe- inside of the vagina. And he's fucking ready to fuck her. Why? Because it's all about his fucking ego. It's all about his ego. Guys, I'm here to destroy your ego today. Because I want you seeing that the only place you have right now to go is a place called humility. That your biggest place of strength lies in humility. It doesn't lie anywhere else. It lies in the place of humility. The longer you stay in ego, the longer you push her away, the more you become disgusting to the opposite sex. Because women like confidence. They don't like brashness. I always like to say confidence is like catnip to a pussy. It breeds leadership. It shows uh, respect. It shows restraint. It shows strength. It shows those things. But a man who's brash, a man who's arrogant and cocky, that is not attractive to a woman. Not the right kind of woman, at least. Not the kind of woman that you want to take home and and be you know, your wife and, and have children with and, and live long forever with, right? That's not what that kind of woman is looking for. She's looking for confidence and power and respect and respect for her not just you respect me woman. All right, let me go to the next one here. How do you know when you're dealing with false positives, trying to take all the small ones I can? Uh, So we had this in the group the other day where somebody was talking about sex and stuff. So one of the biggest false positives I see is, is, is a woman having sex with you. Um, Again, if your wife has said, I don't love you, I don't want to be married to you. She's having an affair. She's moved out. She's filed for divorce. Any of those things are happening. Your marriage, as you know, it is over. Okay. Doesn't mean you can't have a new marriage. However, the new marriage has to be based on new respect and boundaries. But part of those boundaries is you coming from this place of let's not have sex because it's confusing. So many of you guys, especially new guys, you're posting in here about, man, everything, you know, was sucky and it was all shitty. And then all of a sudden we had sex and everything was great. Guys, I have been there. I have been there. I use sex as a tool to get my wife back, to win her affections. But it was manipulation. It was manipulation. It was not love. And that is dangerous because when you come at things, when you come at it from that perspective, you are playing with fire. If you have to manipulate someone to be in a relationship with you, guess what? You have to manipulate them to stay in the relationship with you. So I highly recommend that you don't engage in those things that are false positives. So what are, what are other false positives? False positives look like her coming over and being friendly to you. False positives look like her flirting with you. False positives look like her saying, hey, let's go to church together this weekend. False positives look like her being friendly in conversation, flirting, um, talking about the future, talking about money, talking about things that you talked about before, talking about, you know, uh, movies that you guys like to watch, sending you a note, sending you a thank you, sending you flowers, sending you chocolates getting something for your birthday, any of those things can be false positives. And you go, but Mark, she's doing all those things. I don't care. Here's the thing I'm looking at. Here's the thing I'm looking at, guys. You want my opinion. That's why you're here. That's why you're listening. That's why you're on this call. That's why you're listening to the podcast. You want my opinion. I'm going to give you my opinion. My opinion 
is that until a woman has decided to come back to the marriage, then it's a false positive. It's a false positive. That doesn't mean it's not positive at all. It doesn't mean I'm trying to be negative Nancy and go, oh, well, she's just a bitch. She's just using you, she's manipulating you. I'm not saying that when I say false positive. What I'm saying is, is too many of you get your hopes wrapped up, get all hyped up and go, oh, it's great. Everything's good. She's leaning back in. We're going to have this great marriage again. And then six weeks later, she's out the door again. Or you have sex with her and she looks up and goes, no, remember, this doesn't change anything. What the fuck? Like, why would she do that? It's false positives because she's just as confused as you are. Many times in these situations, women don't want to divorce. They don't want to leave the, the safety of their home. They don't want to do those things. But something happened that drove them to the point of making that decision. They say on average, it takes a woman two to three years before she's ready to leave a marriage. And it's not just you. There could be things that she was doing as well, but you can't own or control any of those things. The only thing you can own or control is you. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just you. So those false positives, guys, they are killer to a man who wants to stay married to his wife. It doesn't mean that you look at it as uh, it's all evil, that, that she's just manipulating you, all these things, right? It, it doesn't look like any of that. What it looks like is take it for what it is. She sent you a note. It's a nice gesture. She talked to you about things that you guys used to do. That was a great conversation. She's cordial with you about the kids. That was a good time. But none of that means your wife has come back to the marriage. That's what I want you to fully, fully understand is that just because she's being nice, just because things seem to be getting better, doesn't mean she is ready to come back to the marriage. Now, I've got a great podcast where I walk through all of those things and what I look for. So what I look for in a woman, and I'll talk about this, Jared just asked this question about what's a real positive when, let, when to let you, or you never let your guard down, Jared, never, ever, ever let your guard down. But here's what we're looking for is we're looking for them, we're looking for the wife to own their mistakes. Just like I'm looking for you to own your shit. I want her to own her shit. I want her to realize that she's also contributed to the toxicity of their marriage. Whether she cheated or not cheated, whether she just fell out of love with you or not, she also contributed to the failure of your marriage. And if she can't own that, if she can't come to a place of owning that, then there's pride in this place. And again, where there is pride, you don't have love because pride and love can't mix. There's humility is the core of love. Humility and vulnerability say, I need you, you need me in this regard. I, I, I need to be vulnerable with you and I'm willing to lay down my heart for you and the same. That's what marriage is. It's based on two people being vulnerable, transparent, and naked with each other and saying, I need this. So the real positives is when the things that happen look like her owning her shit, look like her wanting to go to counseling with you, look like her going to her own counseling, especially if there's like an affair involved. It looks like not just sweeping it under the rug. It looks like having hard fucking conversations. That's what this stuff looks like. Guys, you don't put your guard down. The guard is not to protect you from normal stuff. The guard is to, to not get your hopes in a place that is going to fuck you up. Um, because if she's not sure, then you are, you are giving her something that doesn't belong to her at that moment. While you've given her your heart and you've said, I love you and I want to be married to you forever. If she is pulled back from that, in that moment, we want to pause that. We're honoring her own boundaries. We're honoring her convictions. We're honoring what she's saying. And we're saying, hey, you know what? Okay, I'm going to honor that boundary. And I'm not going to give you my emotions like I used to. I'm not going to hold your hand. I'm not going to say I love you. I'm not going to do those things. I'm going to go neutral because that's the way I'm going to respect your boundaries. And then they say, well, I'm so confused. Why are you doing this? Why are you pulling away? I, I'm not doing anything other than what you've asked me to do. I want to be married to you, but until you're ready to be married to me, I'm going to do this. I'm going to live as a husband in a wifeless marriage 
and wait for you until you're ready to, to do this, to do the work together. It's going to take, I'm over here working on me. I've started to recognize there are big time flaws in me that I've got to work on. I did not create an atmosphere of love for you. I did not make you feel safe. All those things I've got to work on. And I'm doing that on a daily basis, but I want a partner who's going to do that with me. I want a partner who's doing that on her own and wants to do it with me. And so that we can together work on our relationship together. That's how we do it, gentlemen. That's how we move forward. Guys, there were a lot of good questions, but I've run out of time. Um, hold these questions maybe for another one. Uh, maybe we'll do another one next week. It's Thanksgiving. Uh, if you're already listening to this podcast, it's published after Thanksgiving. But for those of you heading into the holidays, um, don't disappear. Uh, make sure you're posting, you know, hey, just cries for help are okay. You know, getting into the group and saying, hey, I'm, um, I, I'm really feeling alone today. Uh, I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling dark. There's nothing wrong with posting that in our group. But when you come in, you know, just bashing her or just telling a 10 page sob story, no one's going to read it. What we want is vulnerability. I feel alone. I feel scared and I don't know what to do is one of the most powerful things that you can write in our group. And um, guys will come around you. No one should be trying to fix you. You know, I, lo- I know a lot of guys in here, that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to fix each other because you feel bad about your own stuff. No one should be trying to fix anybody. What you should be doing is lifting them up, encouraging them, asking them good, hard questions. Stop with giving all this advice. Most of you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, like way too much advice givers out there. You need to ask better questions, get good at asking questions and stop giving out so much advice. Now, for those of you who are like, you know what? I'm ready to move into a new level of empowerment. I highly recommend either our 30 day challenge or our thrive program. Our thrive program is the best program out there. Bar none. I've seen all kinds of stuff. I've seen men's groups. I've seen men's programs. We have the best program bar none. We have assembled an amazing group of coaches and we put you through some amazing exercises, some amazing work. 90 days later, you come out a completely different man. You might come in really emotional and scared about your future. You will come out. If you do the work, you will come out confident, poised, powerful, and free. So if you want that, let's, let's get in, let's get you in contact with one of our team members. There's some guys here, Ryan, uh, Nicolette, Arthur, uh, Brendan, there's a bunch of guys in here that can help you out and get you on a call with one of our team members and, uh, and get you moving in the right direction to thrive. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, this is Mark Santiago, CEO and founder of Empowered Man. I want to thank you for listening to today's podcast. However, before you go, I want to give you a special invitation. Now, listen, we've got a program that is designed specifically for men who are hurting right now, who are on the verge potentially of divorce, who are facing potential separation or already separated, and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. They're dealing with anxiety. They're dealing with cheating. They're dealing with all kinds of shit. If that's you, I want to challenge you to take the Empowered Man 30-Day Challenge. That's right, the Empowered Man 30-Day Challenge. You can go to emchallenge.com right now and sign up for the 30-Day Challenge. Here's why I think you should do that. If you're hurting, you need to understand why you're hurting. You need to understand what is actually going on. In week one of the challenge, we are going to actually rip off that Band-Aid a little bit and coach you through that process. And then we continue to do that process all the way to the point where you start to make decisions that are empowered instead of disempowered. I don't know about you, but I would much, much, much rather make decisions from a place of strength than a place of weakness. So if you're facing decisions, if you're facing this anxiety, what do I do? How do I respond when my wife is being toxic? I don't know what to do. My wife is cheating on me. I don't know what to do. My wife doesn't love me. I don't know what to do. We are going to help you find those answers within. Now, look, this 30 day challenge is probably unlike any other you've been a part of. Why? Because not only do we have daily assignments happening in the program every single day, but you also get live group coaching calls. I said live group coaching calls with myself and my lead coach. That's right. I am a part of this. It's not just some other people doing it. I am there live with you every single week call that we are on. Third part of that is you're going to have a community of other guys that are going through exactly what you are going through. And the best part of this, this isn't even a fraction of the price we could charge for it. In fact, at some point we may raise the price, but right now it is at a bargain. So go to emchallenge.com, emchallenge.com to take the Empowered Man 30 Day Challenge, and I will see you on the inside.